Don't ever do that. Y'all better not. I better not ever see none of y'all calling yourselves regular. Y'all ain't regular. We ain't regular over here. Period. You guys, I have not done a girl, my lashes are non existent. So before y'all come in here judging me, don't, okay? Alright y'all, so as you can tell, today we are doing a get ready with me. I have not done a get ready with me like with y'all in like so long. I did one on live one day. That was cool. But an actual like us sitting down, girl, my lashes are very much non-existent. I have to get them done. My face breaking out. It's giving, they're coming for me, okay? But we're not gonna let that happen. I'm gonna be great. Um, I did my skin routine. I'm gonna do another one tonight, of course. Lash appointment, I'm gonna book it tomorrow. We're gonna get this thing on a roll because the devil will not win. So, girl, how y'all been, first of all? Listen. Y'all know I've been doing a lot of stuff. And it's so crazy. I love reading the comments, like, talking to y'all and stuff. Because y'all be giving the girl... Y'all making me feel good, basically. Like, literally. Y'all making me feel good. Like, they all see the transition. Y'all see the change that I'm making. Y'all see, like, the growth and everything. Um, With that being said, I've been, like, trying to dibble-dabble into this, like, black girl luxury lifestyle because that's just what like I see for myself or whatever so you know y'all know y'all seen like I've made a whole lot of changes when it comes to my life um one thing about it for like one thing for sure is um just like my appearance I've definitely been changing up my appearance I was actually watching somebody's video I think it was Aaliyah J and Aaliyah was saying how she changed her aesthetic to like this little like like minimalistic monochromatic type of look or whatever and she was like i'm not that girl like and she finally got it and was like you know what y'all i've been trying to do this type of thing and that's just not me she realized she was like really edgy and she was like like on the edge of fashion type of thing and um so for a while i thought like my look was like the sexy look like you know showing boobs butt tight dresses all of that stuff but honestly I feel the most comfortable when I'm wearing like like yes form fitting but like things that are more feminine if that makes sense I don't know but it also goes back to the just like me trying to find myself especially when I moved to Atlanta so a lot of the things I feel like I did a lot of things for like I'm not gonna say attention but Kind of like for attention. Like I knew if I looked sexy, I would get the guy's attention and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So so for a long time. And then of course I was young. So I'm like, sex, 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 sex. I kind of realized that I actually do not. I don't get me wrong. I like to like dress up and be sexy and stuff and wear like sexy outfits. But I'm just, I'm not my most comfortable in that. I'm not. I'm always pulling my dress down. I'm always fixing like my, like something or like fixing something on my outfit when when I'm wearing something tight and sexual because I always feel like why are people looking at me or why is this or I feel uncomfortable in my own body and things like that so I don't know it's just crazy just seeing her say that like you know what I mean so now I'm like oh I'm literally learning that about myself too like I don't I kind of don't like me and sexy like like I feel like it's different levels to sexy and I was kind of given like provocative you know what I mean like the girls that wear the the mesh stockings and that's it and like the underwear don't get me wrong love the look the girls be given the girls be giving okay very much giving but you know like when I try stuff like that I'm like yeah, it's in trend, but like, do I really like this? And I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I do not. So, 
just me finding like my style I guess I would say and kind of finding like this look that I actually feel comfortable in so you know I, I did a I did a lot so you know I did the the, 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 the edgy trying to do like real edgy looks didn't like it not that girl um, I did the sexy um, it works sometimes you know sometimes but the most comfortable that I feel in is these like very feminine looks it's so crazy so so anyway there's this topic going around not even topic it's like more like a black a, a bash session going around on tiktok about black girl luxury tiktok or just black girl luxury period but mostly black girl luxury youtube and black girl luxury tiktok now listen, I done heard a lot of things in my life, right? Definitely done heard a lot of things in my life. But one thing that grinds my everlasting gear is when uh, someone on TikTok posts something and says, it's all these black girl luxury TikToks. Where are the regular girl TikToks? What? Why do some of y'all make it your point to degrade yourself luxury does not mean buying dior bags working not not having to work having a rich man buying all of these expensive things living in a high-rise condo um owning a, a luxury car going on trips every other week that's not the only form of luxury like things like literally bathing yourself soaps body washes cooking um cleaning your house um uh like making your bed freaking taking your dog for a walk little things like just be, like expensive doesn't mean luxury like it's luxury can is your own treatment for yourself whatever you feel is luxury then it is luxury why do you want to put on yourself where are the regular black girls why do you want to be regular don't put yourself in the category as regular and then i see like all of the girls and they're like hey y'all this is for the regular uh, black girl tiktokers or whatever da, 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 da. and i watch the video and i'm like girl it's giving luxury like all people are doing is basically romanticizing their lives they are putting little clips of their day into a video they are changing the settings the aperture the brightness or whatever and they're putting a catchy song behind it songs make a move so that does not mean that your life isn't not isn't isn't less any less luxury than uh, somebody else that is living a fucking 10 figure lifestyle or whatever like we're not beyonce's like i'm almost positive no one on tiktok is living that beyonce life like but if they want to romanticize their life and put luxury black girl on there let them do that don't be that girl that wants to be the regular black girl for what romanticize your life make your life luxury everything that you do in your life is luxurious it's going to be luxurious to somebody I don't feel like my life is like overly luxurious but if you look at my TikToks, you would you would think like I'm living like a luxurious life which I am don't play with me period but like I'm not living a lifestyle like that like the girls that are living in the high-rises they don't have to work they're buying like five thousand dollar bags on a Monday like I'm not living that life but things that I do and things that I things that I enjoy to do like enjoy doing may be considered luxury to some people like even like when y'all watch my videos and stuff you're like oh my god I'm living through you like I love your life you have so much fun you're doing all of this blah 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 I'm like girl I'm not doing nothing I'm really just doing the bare minimum like this is like what I enjoy doing like one person's luxury is someone else's regular so my regular which is my regular day what i post on tiktok to somebody else is luxury and my luxury what i feel like somebody else is doing that's luxury this their regular and then i feel like it's like an underlying like girl who you think you are like oh 
why are y'all being so mean to the luxury black girl TikTok community? And then the whole idea of like, everybody's doing the same thing now. Like, okay, like can black women please enjoy luxury? The idea of like living a luxury lifestyle wasn't something that I even grasped upon until like the actual like meaning of it until maybe like the beginning of this year like literally the beginning of this year so like it's just so crazy how i feel like every time a black woman is trying to do something better for herself or is doing better for herself it's like we have to like attack her and like bring her down a notch like you need to humble yourself no the fuck she no why do we gotta humble ourselves? Do you tell Mary Kate and Ashley to humble themselves? Like, no. So why, when it comes to the black community, do you feel like they need to humble themselves? It it disgusts me. I wanna I wanna puke. The heck? That's like literally saying the poor girl. Like I'm, where the poor girl lifestyle at? Why would you even wanna put that in your space, your being, saying that you're poor? No, did we not learn anything from 2021 about manifesting? We've been manifesting for the past two years now. I feel like y'all should know, we don't put those type of names on ourselves. Poor, regular, basic. No, even if you are a basic girl, where you just like your skims look, with a nice cardigan, you know, your monochromatic looks, that doesn't mean you're basic. You just have a minimalistic lifestyle. That doesn't mean you're basic. Oh, uh, I remember when the black girl luxury lifestyle TikTok community first started. Like, I was, like, here for it or whatever. And I'm like, wow, like, look at all of this. Like, I'm so used to seeing, like, a lot of, like, palm-colored women on private jets, yachts, drinking champagne, getting pampered, doing all of this. So when I joined the black girl luxury TikTok community and I'm seeing all of these black girls doing these luxurious things, it made it for me like so much more obtainable, ob obtainable. Like I watched it and I was like, yes, like what? Like I'm putting like stuff on my bucket list. Like just things of like things that I didn't even know that I could like reach basically. Um, just like for it to be obtainable. Like I didn't even know that honestly, like this might be very, uh, I mean, it's not racist, but I feel like reversed is racist. Anyway, um, I, I didn't even know like, that black people went to country clubs. Now, we all know about the country clubs. But I don't know no black people that be going to country clubs, child. But now I do, thanks to black girls. TikTok. Same thing with these high tea parties. I don't know if y'all heard about this or not. But this is like deep, deep, deep into the black girl luxury TikTok community. Like, okay. Um, but yeah, the... High tea parties are like the thing, you know what I mean? Like, it's very exclusive, very like, very like, girl, you gotta be in the know to be in the know to get into the know. But when you get into the know, girl, you gonna have all the knows, okay? So, um, I dug so deep into it. Like, I know I have one that I'm, I'm about to go to in Atlanta and I'm like super excited, but I didn't even know that black women attended events like high tea parties. I didn't know that that was a thing that black women could even be invited to places like this because that's some very palm colored ish you know what I mean or that's what they want people to think so it's just irritating to really just be on TikTok and people are like where are the regular girls nowhere there are no regular black women we are all spectacular it's just uh, so annoying i get it not everybody wants to see the girls that are you know doing things that seem out of our reach and i really feel like that's what the issue is i feel like y'all don't want to see it not because y'all don't feel like it's relatable i feel like y'all don't want to see it because you you deep down unconsciously feel like you will never be able to reach that level you can first of all but you deep down unco unconsciously feel like you can you can, you will not be able to reach that level so seeing things like that they either will inspire you or make you jealous and you're more so on that jealous end Qu don't quote me on this i know how you cruise like the tussle okay i'm just saying I feel like that's literally what it is, like literally. And then because there's a lot, always a lot of like backhanded questions too. Oh, what do you do for a living? And don't get me wrong, I feel like there's a lot of people that actually be asking because they really want to know. 
But girl, I feel like it'd be a lot of backhanded, what's the name? Because they'll be like, what do you do for a living? All y'all do is just stay at home, be stay at home girlfriends. Mm, I can never do that. But it's just like, okay. I mean, okay. I don't know. I just feel like it's like a form of bashing, you know? I feel like it's like, you're, you're kind of bashing the girls. You're kind of bashing the black girl TikTok, the luxury black girl TikTok community. It's kind of giving bully. It's kind of giving... They don't want for us, so we don't want for us, we'll never have nothing. So, you know what they said recently with the Young Dolph situation? Like, you know, I don't know. It's kind of weird. It's weird to me. I don't understand it. I never, I do not, I wholeheartedly do not agree with any black woman calling themselves regular. I do not care. Even when I was poor, I never referred to myself as regular or basic or poor because you do not want to attach those names to you. You don't want to attach that to yourself. It's just so crazy. We got to uplift each other, but we also got to uplift ourselves. What is wrong with y'all? What is wrong with y'all? You also have to uplift yourself. What the heck? Don't ever do that. Y'all better not, I better not ever see none of y'all calling yourselves regular. Y'all ain't regular. We ain't regular over here. Period. And that's on what? Period. Yep. I heard y'all. I heard y'all. Y'all ain't even got. I heard y'all. I heard it. I heard the T at the end of that period too. I know that's right. I know that's right. All right. Ooh, Jesus. I love y'all. Girl, look at the baby hairs. Don't play with it, Sting. So, like, I literally been learning a lot, especially in my early 20s. Like, I can say that now, like, early 20s. <laughs> Because your girl is 26, I am officially over that 25 hill, and I officially am in my late 20s. Oh my God, I'm old, bitch, I'm old. But seriously, like I'm literally in my late 20s, so I actually wanted to do a reflection on, you know, the things that I've learned in my early 20s and what, like, what I've. I, you know, yeah, let's just go with that. I've realized, I ain't gonna say I'm an alcoholic, but I've realized that a lot of the times I turn to going out, drinking, partying, all of that stuff, when I feel like I can't really control some things in my life. And I realized, which I wish I would have realized earlier in my 20s, I realized that the only thing that uh, feed into your depressive state the only thing that you get out of that is falling deeper into your depressive state. Going out, drinking, and party did not make me come home and be like, ah, I feel so much better. Let's get to it. Like, no, girl, I wake up feeling like, damn, I'm in the same space I was yesterday, but my pockets are thinner because I didn't spend money, and now I got a hangover. And I probably did something last night that I'm gonna that I regret. And now I gotta turn my phone off because I don't want nobody to text me and be like, Jimmy, do you remember what happened last night? Now I don't. Normalize uh, blaming yourself for the predicaments you put yourself in. Like literally, I put myself in a lot of predicaments and I cannot blame myself for, I can't blame anybody else but myself for that. But I also can't beat myself up about it because I'm young and I'm learning. Just how if you do something good, you reward yourself. If I do something bad, I, I kind of punish myself, but not in a way of like, literally like punishment. It's more so in a way of like, okay, I'm acknowledging that I'm wrong for this. I acknowledge my fault and a lot of things that have went wrong in my life. And I'm gonna move forward from it in a way that is beneficial to me. Because if I punish myself, that's not gonna do anything. That's just gonna piss me off and make me even more sad. Whereas though, if I acknowledge it and move forward and just try to make my actions better, um, it'll be more of a positive turnout than a negative turnout if that makes sense but that being said and i know a lot it's probably gonna be a lot of friction behind that because a lot of people like to feel like um like you're the drama you know and it's kind of like i probably am like i will be that villain of my story like if i need to be the villain in my my story i will be that villain strictly because it's my story it's my life and i'm going to take control of my life like i will not allow situations to continue to bring me down like you know what i mean i know that sucks to hear but if you're not if you feel like you are not in control of your life girl then that's not okay like you need to learn how to take control of your life and if i'm the villain because i'm taking control of my life then so be it like call me call me she go girl 
call me she go i am the villain okay call me mojo jojo also her mental health was put in jeopardy and these people do not give a fuck about her so it's it, it's giving very much performative it's giving very much we don't give a fuck about you and then they would care about our point yeah and i want to just even say like levon like you know i love you but at the end of the day, this is part of the issue that I find with the internet, like disposability culture. It is a way to handle this without doing all of this. And all of those people have way more power than she does. And by getting this many people involved, you easily set someone up to be disposed of. Even threatening to call immigration, which is I She scammed way. people! Somebody's livelihood somebody's life and their freedom in jeopardy and that is just not she scammed people situation specifically because all of these people have access to resources so it's not even that goddamn deep and i'm not saying she's not wrong because i do believe that it's not that deep that she scammed people she chose to do it was completely fucked up and just being like oh my god she scammed me out of like clothes and makeup for fashion week and like dude people are losing their lives every day we just we're still in the middle of a fucking global pandemic what like, you're still giving first world what was me problems this is not the upper east side you are not blair w waldorf especially thank you i mean there are there are certain instances where she did scam from yeah. she lied about her okay, it's funny because you're not even letting bye bye no 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 you're talking like he's still he's still he's still the, first of all, the, man. the, dog was on the girls are okay. fighting on twitter might not be right the but la influencers the green light not even the LA influencer, it's a scammer that are is scamming the LA influencers. Okay, y'all, makeup done. I'm about to go in now and flat iron my hair, just get it back straight. So, yeah, basically, like, I'm in that space where um, I just, like, I... I'm just growing. Like, I feel like I want to say certain things, but I feel like I also don't want to... I'm bumping the ends, if y'all can't tell, but... Um, I'm in that space where I'm literally... I'm so protective of my energy, and I'm also very protective of my time. Like, I'm very, like... I'm such a, like, fuse box. Like, I'll blow it at any minute. And that's one of the things I've been working on a lot. A lot of the things that I've learned about my 20s, a lot of just reactions like not reacting to things um because i just don't give i don't give my energy y'all I, I feel like i'm getting older so like a lot of the times i'm like girl i'm tired so when i'm giving my energy to something i'm like i'm very particular about what i give my energy to, energy to because bitch i barely have any energy left i know y'all gonna be in the comments like girl you're only 26 i know i know y'all i know i know i know but it's just different from back when you were 18 and 21. Like, I don't know what the vibe is, what, how to say it. Maybe some people that are, like, are 26 or, like, I don't know what it was. But literally, I feel like when I hit 26, the day of, I literally felt, like, this whole vibe. Like, I'm literally exhausted just from little shit that I used to do when I was younger. Like, literally, when I was 25, like, little things that I used to do no longer serve me any purpose. For instance, going to the club. And I know a lot of people probably don't like that because a lot of people that follow me on social media, like, or just follow me, like, on YouTube or, like, subscribe to my YouTube channel, a lot of it came from, like, me and nightlife. Like, I'm that girl. Like, girl, you one thing about it, I'm going to go to the club. I'm going to have me a drink. Like, that's Jimmy. But... Um, it's kind of like scary because I'm kind of changing like I'm evolving kind of and it's kind of scary because I, I see that people are less interested in this new way of life don't get me wrong I know there's a lot of people that are like I see y'all I love y'all like y'all like supporting this I love it um but there are also some people that like are like this is boring like oh this story time is boring or oh, why didn't you, like, where are all the, like, the the fight story times, the drunk story times, you need to go out so you can get a story time, and it's like, I get it, like, I love to bring content to y'all, but it's also like, I'm also trying, I'm 26, and I'm trying to do better, like, I don't want to be in the club all the time, I don't want to be that drunk girl in the club, fighting, getting into arguments, beating up her nigga, like, I don't want to do that, I don't want to fight my man, you know what I mean, so... Like, it's kind of scary because I'm kind of seeing my platform change a little bit. And I know that um, it's really scary because 
it's kind of scary because I'm like, so do I fall off? Like, is this it? Is this the end of the road? You know what I mean? My audience is so used to me being this rah, 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 ghetto. Like, I'm, I'm in the club doing my thing. You know what I'm saying? But now I'm changing and I'm becoming this, like, woman that I see as my future self. And people don't relate anymore. I don't know. It's kind of scary. It's kind of sad, honestly. Um, but you know, I got faith in God, period. I know I'm a, whatever he has planned for me is going to be what it's going to be. But, you know, it's a change. It's a shift. And some people going to come with you. Some people aren't. But there are also going to be people, new people that's going to come and be like, oh, who is this? You know what I mean? Because I'm like a reformed gangster. Like, I can come up here and be like, yeah, you can change your life around too. I see DC college. Like, you know what I mean? So, um, with that being said, so I had got a DM from a girl. Um, I don't know if, I, if she want me to say her name or not. So, I'm not going to say it because I don't want her to, you know, feel like I'm putting her on blast. But if you do see this girl and you do want to be shared, go ahead and comment down below and I'll pin it. But, um... She said, girl, this YouTube stuff is discouraging sometimes. I try to tell myself just do content and post it for me because I love to put it out. But sometimes it does get rough when you don't feel like you're growing. What helps you keep going? So um, I wanted to really touch on this strictly because I feel like I'm going through that. Like I just said, I'm going through that right now because I really honestly feel like a lot of people that were following me don't relate to my content anymore because it's kind of not giving like the what it was given before which i know it's not like i literally made the announcement like hey y'all like the content is changing i'm like trying to be a different person i'm trying to grow and like evolve or whatever and um you know so i feel it i feel you know what she is saying and i also feel like um a lot of people like even the talk on tiktok about everybody doing the same content or whatever like this luxury black girl content number one i feel like this all the time i feel like um a not seeing my channel progress how i want it to like i want to be at a hundred thousand you know what i mean like i want to be at a hundred thousand and it's kind of like sucks because it moves so slow in my opinion i'm like it's it's like moving so slow um so i feel like i'm not ever gonna get there basically um so i i know which i know the feeling i know the feeling girl i know the feeling like what the heck i broke my freaking hot comb so don't judge me if it's not like on flat flat and i ran out of foam so honestly i'm just working with a prayer right now okay what helps me as like is basically to not put the influencers that I look up to basically as competition. I love to look at them as inspiration because um, I whatever, if anything that I want to do, I put my mind to, I can do it, period. Like I would never ever in my life say, oh, I'm never going to reach 100,000 subscribers or I'm never going to make it to a million or anything like that. I would never even put that on myself. I know for a fact one day girl i'm gonna make it to that point like period but um it can be kind of like bleh, because when 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 lord like you know like i'm like when every day but what i basically what i basically like have been like one thing that i've been that i learned in my 20s is to live in a moment i'm so grateful to be able to have like a platform like this where literally almost twenty five thousand people have watched or have followed me or at some point have watched my videos like i feel like you need to live in the moment and be grateful for the times that you do have with the smaller amount smaller community that you have with your um followers so for instance I'm over here like, oh, I want 100,000 so bad. Take the time to enjoy your time with your smaller community. I love doing videos and it's just us. Like that is fun to me. Like I get to connect with y'all. Like if I was to do my story times and I had my live premiere story times and it was 100,000 of y'all, I would not be able to connect with y'all. I would not be able to answer all of the messages that I get. I would not be able to actually like 
make friends out of my YouTube community. Like my DMs get flooded like on a daily, but like I have like a certain amount of people like I was like maybe 10 people that I talk to faithfully. Like we be in the DMs chatting it up. So I'm like in that space where I'm grateful for the amount of followers that I do have because I can create this community. Like don't sit in the future and like and live in the future. Like, oh, I wish I was there. I wish I had this. Sit in the present of what you do have and be grateful for that because it's going to be times when you don't have it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just crazy. Like, it's like when you have a kid and they're like a baby you're like oh i can't wait till they're a teenager we get to talk and then they start growing and you're like oh i wish i remember and i remember when you were a baby like i wish we could go back to the times when i could hold you in my hands you know what i mean so i'm grateful for the amount of subscribers and followers that i do have because i actually can talk to y'all and connect with y'all like i'm just so grateful for what i do have like i could literally not have any you know what I mean? I could not have this platform at all. So I'm not going to sit here and be ungrateful and be like, oh, I wish I had. Th no, I'm so fucking happy that I'm able to have even this amount. Like, this is a huge amount. Like, my amount is huge to some people that have like 10,000, 5,000. And I'm like, uh, I see people with 200,000. And I'm like, oh, I wish I was there. But it's like, no, I'm glad. I'm just glad to be where I am. You plan for the future, you live in the present, and the past is what you learn from. You don't dwell on the, the future, don't dwell on the past, don't even dwell on the present. Just live and be yourself and plan accordingly and learn from what you have done before to move as you are and move as you will be, if that makes sense. Welcome to my TED Talk. I'm so like a such a believer in God that whether I'm stagnant now or not, like I know for a fact, like one of these days is gonna hit. It's just not my time yet. That's all it is to it. Like if you feel like, why is this not moving? I always, I'm a believer in checking yourself, checking your environment, and then understanding it's just not the time yet. But keep putting in the work. Literally keep putting in the work and things will go great. Like you, God is gonna push it through for you. Four years ago, I was, fucked up like oh my god i was so fucked up it don't make no sense like life was terrible like i was it was so bad i don't want to talk about my atlanta life update because i'm going to do a separate video on that but i just want y'all to know like it's it your time gonna come period so when i went to revolt that was like the biggest like i was so full i'm scared but i was so full because I literally felt the energy around me. Everybody was just there to create and network and like build and everybody wants to be at that next level. And it sucks to say this and I know somebody's going to be so upset about this. I don't want anybody to feel a way about this, but if you're not I don't I need y'all to understand how how much lighter I feel that I no longer go to the club, let alone work at the club like me quitting the club was like one of the best decisions i ever made um uh, it was a transition i will say that just because i'm used to a certain amount of money coming specifically from that but you know like again plan for the future i knew i did not want to be there i'm learning from my past mistakes like i don't want to be in this environment and so I'm planning for the future and I plan for the future and I'm putting in other incomes that cover that so that I'm not stressed about money. That's one thing I'm not, I do not want to stress about, okay? So leaving the club was one of the best things I ever wanted to do. And then I know for a fact it was the best thing I ever wanted to do because there was a moment when literally my goal was after my birthday, I'm not going to the club no more. Like I'm going to take a hiatus, et cetera, et cetera. But I didn't do that. Literally, I did not... It technically leave last day of being in the club was October 31st it is November 1st and uh, was November 19th I have not been to the club in 19 days and I know some people are like girl it's just a club but like no like if you have been in that club life girl that shit like will grab you by your throat okay it will have you in a choke hole one arm on neck one arm on frontal like literally it will let like it will beat your it will beat your ass that club life and it took me literally two months basically to fully get out of the club even after I quit the club 
it took me uh, two months to still get out of it and I kept feeling like what is the problem like I don't work at the club anymore but I still don't feel right I still don't feel in my element of Jimmy 26 being this mature feminine grown adult woman woman you know what I mean and I'm like bitch just cause you keep going to the motherfucking club ho why are you still in the club bitch girl so november 1st literally like i'm like yeah like october 31st the last night i went out and i literally felt in the club i was like why the fuck am i here like yeah it's halloween etc cetera, etc cetera, but like why am i here why am i here like i literally felt i feel like god said Psh, like smack the hell out of me in the club and so when november 1st came i was like get your shit together get your shit together and literally literally i took it's the 19th of november so was it like like almost two three weeks almost three weeks right everything has been aligning itself every single thing i mean like i'm i'm i did the wig sale sold out i did revolt revolt summit hit me up literally email me right back literally email me back and you know what i mean like what that fell into place when you allow to yourself to be in situations or around people or relationships or whatever to hold you back they're blocking the door to those other opportunities and it's so crazy when i finally finally i swear to god october 31st i closed that fucking door of the club this door that i've been manifesting for the longest time finally open and i'm literally walking through it i mean like left and right i'm walking left and right it's just opportunity here opportunity there opportunity here opportunity there. like i'm i even applied for the Re uh, revolve brand ambassador program boom up approved so y'all be seeing that soon i didn't want to talk about it yet but it's officially approved so I, i've been accepted into their brand ambassador program i'm like what the what the f like you telling me this whole time like this is what I had to do. So I'm a walking manifestation of one door closes, another one opens. Like sometimes you need to allow your, shut that damn door, shut the door, close the door. I literally do not regret at all, at all not being in the club because I feel like it, it came to a point where it was not beneficial. It just wasn't not with the life that i wanted to be to, to live and I, that that's no judgment to anybody that's in the club because girl do your thing which i was in the club for three years three three technically two years working in the club and it just wasn't for me it literally was not for me was did i have money in my pocket yes like what like a girl was making some coins but it comes to a point where, where do you cross the line between chasing your dreams and being financially okay? Because in my mind, yes, being in the club, I get, I'm getting some money, okay? I'm getting some money, okay? I don't think I was able to get that core. But I want money that's not, I want some money. Like I want these brand deals that are in the in the figures up in them double digit numbers like i want some brand deals like you know what i mean like six figure deals and the little bit of money which is it's not a little bit i was getting a little i was getting a lot of some money but the little bit of money compared to that big check that i could be getting if i would if i apply myself to where i know i want to be had, well, that ain't even gonna compare that. But girl, I'm about to get dressed. My hair look nice, real cute, or whatever. Y'all know I gotta show y'all my perfume, my fragrances. Girl, listen, Dosia sent me a whole bunch of new fragrances, y'all. I'm so excited because, like, the fragrance makes the outfit. I feel like the fragrance was the first step of me joining that feminine game, that feminine, like, uh, like, you know, the black girl luxury TikTok thing, like that. Like, girl, like that. Shout out to Dossier. So, Dossier is sponsoring this video, girl. Shout out to y'all because, listen, they sent me um, a package and they sent me two new fragrances that, of course, I want to share with y'all. So, girl, let's get into it. All right, y'all. So, y'all know before we step out the house, we got to be smelling good because that's the only, only way 
you gonna you gonna be the center of attention. It ain't even about what you're wearing no more. It's about how you smell it because they're gonna smell you before you step into the room. Now I know I don't play with my fragrances, y'all. Like I'm I'm at this point, I'm a seasoned vet into the fragrances. And my thing about fragrances is they can get really pricey so so pricey so pricey so i love the fact that dossier gives you these replica products of these very high end like uh fragrance lines and everything like that for like literally a fraction of the price like i'm obsessed with them i love the fact that everything honestly everything literally smells like the actual product like that is the main thing for me because i hate something that and I, I i i think i'm smelling like what it's supposed to smell like and it's not no girl like you're gonna get the product that you're supposed to get period okay so girl dossier shout out to y'all i'm gonna start off with the first one that i got you know the dossier packaging this is what it looks like looking real nice okay so the first one is called floriental cedarwood so this is inspired by the one and only mugler okay yes and this one is the alien perfume so now if y'all have been following me for a while now girl y'all know mugler like mugler is like that girl number one if i like whenever i get to that point and i'm buying a high priced item as far as like fashion wise going straight to mugler it's either moschino or mugler that's number one number two mugler has these fragrances that are so distinguished like they are so defined and so like sh like you know a mugler fragrance when you smell it if you were that girl i feel like mugler is one of those fragrances that only the very wealthy only the very mm, type of women you know what i mean like you have to be in that lane in order to know what mugler is when i tell y'all I'm obsessed I have their angel and so when I went into the store I wanted to get alien but they were sold out alien is like their top one and it sells out like that like that okay but you know who got it dossier got it period so they sent me the alien their version of the uh, Mugler's alien this one is called Florian so it's cedarwood so I'm gonna just read some of the notes for y'all just so y'all know what y'all getting yourselves into okay period but trust me y'all know I don't play with my fragrances so I'm gonna make sure I have y'all always smelling real good okay so the top notes are mandarin cardamom orange blossom the middle notes are jasmine sandbox and then cedarwood and then the base notes are helotrope flower and then amber and vanilla i don't know if y'all know this or not but i love it amber and vanilla but when you throw in that little twist that orange blossom that mandarin that jasmine that cedarwood it gives like i feel like the cedarwood makes it that such a defined scent like whenever i have a scent that has cedarwood in it those are the ones that stick like those are the ones that literally like stick i don't know how else to describe it they literally stick to you and they you walk through a room and everybody is going to smell you because they stick like i swear to god and then i love when you are able to add those like notes those top notes of like fruity and then kind of like citrusy on top of the the um the notes of like the vanillas and like all of that that is my smell i know my smell child that's it so ah, i haven't smelled it yet because i love like open them on, on, the, on the camera but i have smelled alien in the store so let's go yeah we're gonna see we're gonna see okay and if, i know it's not gonna disappoint me because i just know dossier don't come to play when it comes to their fragrances but we're gonna see okay so let's see hold up oh i'm scared oh 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 it smells like sex oh my god Oh my God. I swear to God, if you don't buy anything from them, please go and buy this one. What I, Floriental Cedarwood is inspired by Mugler's Alien. It smells just like the, the real one in the store. And, oh, whoo, Jesus. Like, girl, I'm wearing this tonight. I'm wearing this tonight, period. This smells like sex. Not sex like sex. It smells like this is gonna like it's like it's like the 
the idea of the red dress, right? Like you wear a red dress and it's like all the boys are like, oh my God, the boys are get the boys want, the boys are all over you. If you wear that little red dress, the boys are like, girl, this is the scent that is like, oh, like it hits you in your heart. It hits you in your heart. I am obsessed. I already knew Dossier was going to come through with the scent because I already knew it was going to smell just like it smells in the store. But it's the fact that Mugler does its thing when it comes to its scents. Okay? It does its things. Shout out to Dossier because it'll give it to you for a fraction of the price and you are literally getting the same exact scent for less. <sighs> okay, 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 okay. I need to relax because we still have one more so this one this is the second one that they sent me and this one girl this one is called woody freesia i hope i'm saying that right really woody freesia and this one is inspired by the armani c now i don't know if y'all know this or not but this one has the girls in a choco like i mean like the girls on luxury black girl tiktok they are like raving about this and the people on tiktok are like uh i'm so tired of the girls wearing the same thing please retire the baccarat Please retire the Armani seat. No! Shout out to Dossier because the girls are giving deathbed for this one. Apparently, this is like a really fresh scent. I never actually smelled it in the store, but I heard a lot of the girls saying that this is the scent that your everyday scent that you wear that is very um, mature, it's light, and it's like that breath of fresh air type of scent. I don't know, we gonna see. So, um, this one, the top notes are Freesia, Black, Black or not? Black or it? Black or it? Black current? I think I'm saying it right. And strawberry. Ooh. And then the middle notes are rose, jasmine, and peach. Okay, so it's giving a very fruity smell. I get the light part where they got that from. And then the base notes are patchouli, vanilla, blonde woods, and musk. Hmm. That's interesting because when I hear musk, I'm hearing like a, like it's not light. It's very, it's more like a masculine side. I don't know. We're going to see. Let's see. Let's see. So let's see. Oh, wow. Okay, I get it. Okay, I get it. I get it. Oh, she smells good. This is, oh, God. When I tell you, Gosier never, never goes wrong. First of all, she is that scent that you wear when you are going to a tennis match to the banquet if you're going to a um golf tournament if you are going to um a high tea party and you are trying to get your 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 king this is a scent that you wear because it's not too sex like how the mueller is that's date night that's date night very high valued there we go that is this type of scent this scent i know when i go to that high tea party that's coming to atlanta I'm gonna wear this one. This has that scent. I feel like that will attract the type of people that are in those high valued rooms. This is a scent. And I know some people are like, girl, it's just a fragrance. No, like fragrances literally set the tone. Like I've been in conversation with people strictly because they're like, what are you wearing? Oh girl, the fragrance? Hold on, let me let me let me put you on, sis. Okay. These are literally day and night, like literally one of them great for daytime um events the other one very much nighttime very much you are out to scout your man you are out to date your man or you know something of that nature like a nighttime event this is definitely girl okay i'm not gonna lie yeah this is definitely my favorite this is my favorite this is mine i love y'all these are my babies okay all right, y'all, so now that we are done with the fragrances, again, shout out to those Air Girl. I'm going to leave my code on the screen for y'all to use so you can get a discount on your purchase. I'm going to also leave the links down below in the description box so y'all can just boop, 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 click real easy, okay? Go get y'all some fragrances. Go buy yourself some. Go buy your friend some. Go buy your man some. Go buy your mom some. It's the holidays coming up, y'all. Listen, do your part, okay? Period. And there's also some holiday parties coming up too. You gotta go find your man or whatever. Make sure you're smelling good, okay? Make sure you're smelling good. All right, so now we're done with the fragrances. Let's get into the fit, okay? Because y'all know, you know, it ain't never gonna be nothing if you don't look good now. I gotta look good. So let's get into this fit, okay? 
Okay, so of course, before we get into the outfit uh, portion of this video, I want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor, Lovely Wholesale. You know, I work with them a lot of times, so I love getting certain pieces from them. So, for instance, a lot of the pieces that you're going to be seeing today are a lot of fall wear, comfortable lounge wear kind of pieces. So shout out to Lovely Wholesale for sponsoring this video. I'll leave their links down below as well. So make sure I go check them out. Y'all know I have a coupon code for y'all too for that. So if you buy anything, make sure you use my coupon code so you can get some money off, girl, okay? I'm trying to say them coins. It's the holiday season, okay? So the first thing I got was this cute sweater right here. I just love the pattern on it. And then I have like this little saved category on my Instagram and i have this like look that i'm going for like this like oversized type of sweater with like a black skater skirt and something like real cute you know or like a, some type of skirt i don't know y'all gonna see it whenever we get to it on instagram but this is so cute it's so comfortable i love the two different like tones of like the browns and everything and of course the white on top it looks so clean it fits really nice so yeah i thought this was real cute girl i think i got this i don't know what size i got this in but i'll make sure i put all the sizes down below in the description box but i kind of wanted it to be a little bit bigger but i still it's still baggy i just wanted it to be a little bit more oversized but i still think it's really cute again i love the colors and i love the material of it this is like yeah this is cute this is real cute this is just one of those like you know chill mm, 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 little tops or whatever right okay Okay, so next up is this piece right here. It is just this really pretty blush pink dress. It has this detailing in it on the front going like up and down the whole entire outfit. And I just thought this was so cute. It has this little piece at the bottom where you can kind of like scrunch up the dress kind of and just tie that into a cute little like bow right here. I think that's so cute. I'm trying to stand on my tippy so y'all can see the bottom half of it. But yeah, it's just this really cute dress. I felt like it would just be really cute to have because it's kind of like in that middle length of like you still want to be cute and be able to wear a dress even though it's the winter fall time or whatever but um it's still like that material and that like coverage of okay i'm gonna be i don't want to be cold but i do want to be cute so yeah this is just a cute little lounge dress like not lounge in the house but it's not like doing too much of a dress but it's also still very you know classe you know what i'm saying i'm living my loan so i can't zip it all the way up i'll definitely have to get somebody to zip it up but i love the neck part i love how high it comes up i just feel like this is just like one of those dresses where it's just like you know like i'm just very much giving i don't know the word for it but this is super cute it zippens up all the way in the back which is why i can't can't zip in it but it's still so cute i feel like it fits on me really really nice this is cute i feel like this is very like i'm going home for thanksgiving with my man and i still want to be cute for him but i also still want to be presentable for his family i love this i love it's just it gives it's giving a vibe it's giving a vibe i'm glad I, i'm glad i got this one i'm glad they sent me this 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 is cute and i love the blush pink so this next piece that I got is actually these gray sweatpants. So I got these specifically because you can never go wrong with gray sweatpants. Gray sweatpants don't only look good on the men, girl. They be giving on the girls too. So I love how we're in like this era of being able to like dress up sweatpants. So um, and then also kind of do like a chill vibe with them too. So. Yeah, I just thought these were so cute and I wanted to just add another sweatpants type of vibe to my collection. Okay, and next up we have this green cardigan. It's so, I got it in a larger size because I kind of wanted it to be oversized so if i wanted to i could really like you know throw it off the shoulder a little bit do one of those numbers like something really cute you know what i mean and i love this green because i also feel like aside from it just being like one of those cardigans i also feel like 
it's like a transitional cardigan. I can wear this in the fall and still match the flow, but I can also transition this to springtime as well. So I got this green because if you are, you know, a girl and you are with the trends, green is taking over Instagram. Like green is that, like their Instagram is gonna push you, like your picture, strictly because you're wearing green. So I wanted to get a green piece to add to my closet just so that, you know, you gotta follow the trends in order to grow. So I have a video coming on that real soon too. So if you wanna know about growing your YouTube channel, starting a YouTube channel, or just growing in general, I got y'all. Stay tuned for that video. But uh, specifically, I've got this specifically to follow the trend and to be on trend and to, you know, make my way onto the explore page because green is popping right now, okay? And then on top of that, this is just super cute and I feel like it can go with an outfit, a nice statement piece. I need to get me a nice bag or some like green heels or something to go with it to really like, you know, do something. Do a little one-two or whatever. I love this green on white too. I might do this with a white outfit. Oh, I love it. This is, this is cute. I feel like I really like just bundle up with this, you know, and be real like, ah. I see the pictures now. Oh. <laughs> so this piece right here, y'all, is absolutely positively my favorite piece that Lovely Wholesale has sent me. Um, I am so excited to share this piece specifically because this is literally, I feel like, something that every girl needs to have in her closet. This button does not want to say button. Please do not mind it. But um yeah this is just a piece that i feel like every girl needs to have in her closet it's such a comfortable jacket i feel like i can wear this with any and everything like don't be that girl that's out in the club with either no jacket on or a real ugly jacket on you know what i'm saying or if you're going to these events and you know you still want to be very like you know like you know but you also don't want to be like you know this is that piece to throw over that really sexy black dress or that really like cute like professional outfit you still want to be on trend still be fashionable this is the jacket i love this jacket every single year i get one of these it goes all the way down to my knees and i'm five four so it goes all the way down to my knees it has pockets on it i love that and then the best part about it because my one last year didn't have this one has a hood oh my god i'm obsessed i'm obsessed i'm obsessed i even wear this in the house y'all i have to buy another one because i also wear this in the house <laughs> because i be getting real comfortable making this like this is my robe so i'm gonna have to buy a robe similar to this so i can just be in the house like mm. Sitting down drinking my 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 coffee or my my hot chocolate it's hot chocolate season bitches but yeah so yeah this is super cute it's nice and long it's the same material on the inside so it's not that itchy material um it's you know long on the sleeves i got it an uh, extra size up because i like mine to be oversized um so yeah i love this so much i love the hood on it and everything um actually today i'm going to be styling this jacket with the outfit today so we're gonna be wearing this, um, yeah, real cute or whatever. So let me put my outfit on so y'all can see what I'm wearing and we're gonna go from there, okay? All right, y'all, so this is the outfit that I decided to go with. So yeah, it's this really cute black dress. I decided to add some tights with it, you know, to fit the fall theme. And then of course, my kind of throw jacket to go over top of it. And I'm gonna wear some black booties to go with it. I got my rings on my hands and I got this gold hoop to kind of like give it that, you know, like that, that grown and sexy type of style. But yeah, I love a little black dress, especially in the fall time. Just got this uh, clutch to go with it, black clutch to go with it. And I love the sheer on the top part. It kind of like is giving night out, but kind of like more upscale, kind of more mature. So I have my watch on, my JBW watch, sponsor me. And I have this uh, just regular crystal uh this regular crystal little bracelet to kind of uh, match it. But yeah, this is my outfit, y'all. Um, I'm gonna post a picture in it, of course. So make sure I head to my Instagram so you can go like that and see how everything all came together. But yeah, I loved everything. This looks so cute. So again, shout out to her lovely wholesale for sponsoring this video. This is the jacket that I got from them and I'm gonna wear this tonight. 
okay real cute and of course i have to spray myself down with my dossier perfume my florianto cedarwood so girl let's So yeah, I look cute. I smell good. Girl, the mindset is giving. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I love y'all so much. And I will see y'all later because I'm about to go have a drink, okay?